Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Caden Cleveland here with the Oklahoma Senate, and you are joining us for our latest episode of OK Senate Sit Down. This week we're joined with Senator Greg McCourtney, who among the many hats you wear here in the Oklahoma Senate, uh, most recently was the co-chair of our uh, joint uh, bicameral bipartisan medical marijuana work working group. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about a lot of information today, uh, a lot pertaining to the latest kind of hot topic here going on in Oklahoma is uh, medical marijuana, what that looks like, everything that uh, we need to know about it, and all the changes and adjustments, I guess, that are uh, upcoming in, uh, in that kind of area. So hang tight with us, guys, and we got a lot of good information coming, and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're joined with Senator Greg McCourtney. Uh, now, Senator McCourtney, uh, one of the latest and most hot topic issues that's going on lately in Oklahoma is the issue of medical marijuana. Uh, as passed from state question 7088, it was a, a popular vote by, I guess, the will of the people, right? Absolutely. Um, and so I guess to ask you the first question is, uh, you were the co-chair of our bicameral, uh, bipartisan, Work, working group that we had to kind of uh, explore this topic and uh, work it out. Um, how did that kind of come about? Right. First, it'll be a whole lot easier if you just give in and call it the joint working group. Yes, okay. Uh, well, that... We will at this point call it the joint working group <laughs> on medical marijuana. Okay, there perfect. you go. Uh, really, it, it came about, uh, it was kind of a slow roll in that direction. Uh, during last session, there were a couple of different kind of competing bills going on, one in the House and mm -hmm. one in the Senate, uh, with how to deal with medical marijuana. Uh, neither of those bills actually passed, uh, mainly because uh, we knew that the people were going to get to vote on it uh, very soon after session, and we wanted to, to let the people make the decision mm -hmm. instead of try to preempt their decision. But I was uh, the chair, or not the chair, but the author of the House bill when it came over to the Got Senate. It, right. And so that kind of put me on the radar as someone who was willing to work on this issue. And uh, the bill that I was a part of was much more in line with 788 than the other one. And so it kind of uh, made me the guy in the Senate, I think, in a way, who was willing to work on that issue uh, more kind of in the direction of, yes, medical marijuana is a good thing. Right. Uh, medical marijuana is something that we should look into. And so uh, Pro Tem Schultz asked me to actually start an informal working group during session last year. And so we had started working before uh, this big working group came about. After 788 passed, Pro Tem Treat, because we had had held a new election. And so uh, he asked me to actually officially step into that role uh, in this House Senate group that we've been working in. And so uh, somewhat because I was the uh, the guy who said right yes to, to yeah. said yes to the first <laughs> bill, I just kind of continued to roll in that direction. But uh, I've got a lot of background in healthcare. Gotcha. I come from a pharmacy family. So I kind of grew up in this whole um, taking taking medication mm -hmm. to, to help your health and and then ha being a hospice owner uh, I've seen a lot of people who have used marijuana for years right. uh, and so I came predisposed knowing that it can be good medicine so it sounds like everything just kind of fell into place you didn't necessarily intend from the start to be the co-chair of, of, a, of a large working group that we had here in the, in the Senate and the house kind of a joint body but uh, it sounds like just everything from your background to uh, you being the author of that that bill, everything just kind of fell into place. Uh, yeah, it, it, <laughs> when, when I decided to run for Senate, I promise you, becoming the king of marijuana in Oklahoma was not anywhere on my radar. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, I, as a former pastor, I, I, my friends make a lot of fun of me. <laughs> uh, just, you know, how did you become the marijuana guy? That's interesting. And that's, yeah, so it, it's been a joke. That's true. Sure. That's awesome. Okay, so you were the co-chair uh, along with uh, Representative Eccles, right. correct? Okay. Correct. Now, you guys met for, I believe, it was, did you have 12 different meetings? I think they ended up with 12 meetings, so we met three months straight. Okay, gotcha. And then over the last few months. 
what were your overall findings? Uh, did was it very productive? What what kind of tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> I, I think we continuously found out how many things we didn't know okay. about medical marijuana, and so I, I think that was the most productive part of that whole process mm -hmm. has been to bring to light not just for us behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But I think for the state of Oklahoma, I mean, the fact that it was very open, very transparent, uh, everything that we did was broadcast. I mean, even when we right. you know, were drafting language, which is something that's always done behind closed doors, I mean, we drafted bill language with the camera right rolling, there. with the mm -hmm. microphone on. And so I, I think just that open process, uh, it, it was interesting to me, the first couple of weeks, we had kind of the people who brought us 788. Uh, very much the pro side, they came, and at the start, they're very defensive, very, you know, 788 is is good, and we don't need to mess with it, and you guys need to leave it alone, and and now, at the end of the 12 weeks, we actually are, are going to base the next step off of uh, a revision bill that that same group of people wrote, really? because during that 12-week period, we just kept studying, kept studying, kept finding, hey, we, we need to address this. Oh, we didn't address this. And I think everyone, no matter if you're pro-medical marijuana or opposed, mm -hmm. everyone sees that we've got some real problems that need to be solved. And so I, I think that's the biggest plus of what we did is just uh, holding these sometimes painful public meetings yep. So that everyone can look at it and, and say, oh, yeah, okay, now that's something that's right. that we didn't anticipate, but it's definitely something that needs to be fixed. And so, yeah, that's where we are now. Gosh, so that I, one thing I really appreciated about the working group was the way you set it up as so transparent. Uh, you mentioned the how you guys drafted, even right there in the meetings, live cameras going on, and, you know, sometimes uh, got a little bit chaotic, different things going on. <laughs> But another thing you did is you even opened up and you created an email, specific email address. So if just anybody in the general public was watching or was there in the meetings and had a question, they could immediately send an email to that to that, and, and you would be looking at it. Is that right. about right? Absolutely. So yeah, we, we about halfway through the process, it became clear that we were not going to be able to let everyone speak at that meeting who mm -hmm. wanted to ask a question or felt like they had something to say uh, just because the response was overwhelming. Right. And so we set up this email account and it's a Senate email ad address, but those come into the Senate and they're dispersed to every member of that committee. So every week we see everything that comes into that and each of us are given the ability to respond directly to those really? people. And so, and I can't remember, uh, but I think in the first week we had well over a hundred emails come really? into that. And so, uh, and really some of the things that I'm still working on today, mm -hmm. some of the problems that we don't have solved yet are right. things that came in through that email link of a very specific mm -hmm. kind of niche. Um, you know, how are we going to handle bankruptcy law? Um, and so things that we still had, I mean, the committee hadn't even talked about, right. but, you know, just questions of, uh, and that's the, the, the latest one was one that came through that email of, um, you know, if, if, a, if someone's renting a building, growing marijuana inside of it, and they just walk away, if they go bankrupt and walk, walk away, the person who owns that building now has a building full of marijuana that they are not licensed to own. How do we handle that? So, yeah, so that's what we're working on right now is trying to answer that type of question. And, and it's like you said, like, that's things that it, like, nobody would have considered for, while you're actually drafting the bill. But it's, it, that's why it's so great that there was such an open flow of communication going on. Because this is people who, you know, people who do rent houses, you know, out there that are thinking, okay, how is this going to affect me? Yeah. So that's, very, that's a very cool solution that you guys came up with there. Um, so I guess kind of uh, overall picture here you're you're the guy who's kind of been able to look at the whole uh, from the start to where we're at right now you've been able to kind of survey the entire process of a uh, state question 788 and the implementation of medical marijuana what is your overall view and is, is are we moving in the right direction or what are, you, what are your thoughts? Right. I, we are moving in the right direction. Okay. We have a long way to go. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a thousand mile journey that we're going to be on. And I, I've come to terms with the fact that 
Uh, if I run for re-election, if I continue to be elected, I have 10 more years that I can serve. If I serve those 10 years, I guarantee you in my last year, I will still be running marijuana legislation because it will take us, I don't know how many years to, to think through all of the ramifications mm -hmm. of putting in a, a medical marijuana system and how, how you track it, how you, right. how you manage that. Um, and we kind of see that from other states too, right? Uh, that have that have implemented medical mar marijuana before, and they're still trying to adjust their states and, and different things like that. So, is that something you look at other states and the way they do things? Absolutely, yeah. We we have learned a lot from other states, and that's one of the things that that the the task forces worked on mm -hmm. is you know we brought in some some people from all across the nation to look at, you know, okay, here's how Arkansas did it, here's how Colorado did it, here's how California did it, here's what happened when they did that. And and so we've tried to learn from other people's mistakes as much as we can, but, and it's still happening, I mean, this morning on the news, the Massachusetts has, yep. has opened up marijuana. Uh, they have two marijuana, two pot shops in the whole state, and so there are people waiting in line. I mean, it's like four or five blocks long going through these neighborhoods, you know, standing in line waiting for their marijuana. And so people who live in those neighborhoods are not very happy about it. And so, you so. know, we, we see every state has, and we are, we're going to feel some pain. Interesting. Uh, the next uh, probably six months are going to be pretty ugly. Really? Um, as we try to get things lined out, because there are a lot of problems that right. are going to require legislative solutions. And we hadn't, been in session yet to fix it. That's right. And, and it's not even just only medical marijuana issues because this, this kind of overflows into so many different categories. <laughs> For example, like this is a heavily uh, cash business, correct? Medical marijuana. I mean, so how does that affect, you know, our, our finance committee, you know, with the, all the tax codes, different things like that. That's a challenge Senator Bice is going to have to deal with, I guess. But yes, yeah, so that, that was I, probably at all the meetings we held, the one that was most fascinating to me is is uh, we asked Tony Maxton from the Tax Commission to come and, and he talked through the processes that they're having to set up and it had never dawned on me. I, I'm a small business owner. I pay a whole lot of different kinds of taxes, but I pay them all, you know, online through websites, you know, electronic transfers. Right. I mean, I've, I've never given the state of Oklahoma cash, cash money. Right, yeah. uh, marijuana is really hard to run marijuana money through the banking system because it's still illegal federally. Mm -hmm. And so as, it, as long as the bank takes FDIC insurance, which most banks, almost all banks do, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be really scared to touch that money. And so it is a cash business. And so the tax commission has had to set up, you know, a, a, a way for them to, you know, bring in right. bags of cash to the tax commission. And, and so, I mean, so you're talking about extra security, you're right. talking about extra personnel to be able to count that money, account for that money. Um, it, it is far, far reaching all of the different, uh, areas of, of law that don't have anything to do with health. Right. I mean, the other, the big, the other big example that probably the most phone calls I get is employment. Uh, if if you own a company, you, you know you've got employees driving heavy machinery. Or, right. or for me, I, in the home care and hospice industry, I have employer employees driving their car all over southeastern Oklahoma, uh, going to work today. Right. Um, part of their job is driving. So if I have a staff member who has a license to use marijuana. How does that work? Can they smoke a joint while they're rolling on to their next client? Right. Uh, the answer to that's no, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but how you deal with that? How you know you can't just drug test somebody and say, "Oh, you tested positive for marijuana, mm -hmm. you, you're out." Um, it's much more of are they impaired? Mm -hmm. um, you know, because if if you use your marijuana but you're not impaired, then you you can come to work just like any other. I mean, I take medicine. Right. I can go to work with that medicine. These people should be able to go to work with their marijuana. Right. But they shouldn't be a safety problem at the same time. And so uh, that's one of the things we've been working on. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things that, that we're working to fix right. as quickly as we can. So overall, it's, it sounds like from you that uh, we are headed in the right direction. 
But I mean, we, we got a long ways to go, a ton of different issues we still need to address. And, and that'll be something we can get a lot of, a lot of ground covered on as we move into session. Is that about right? Right. I, I think the plan uh, from here for this, uh, for the joint task force is that we're going to probably come back together here in the next couple of weeks okay. uh, and hopefully be able to roll out again in, in a bipartisan. So we've got Democrats, we've got Republicans, we've got the House, we've got the Senate. Uh, you've got Representative Eccles, who's done a great job, you know, with us working together and leading this committee. Uh, hopefully we're going to come back together and be able to roll out a bill that's not going to come close to solving all of the problems, but is going to set up the framework that we need to be able to move forward. Lots of that. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. We're about out of time. Is there anything else you wanted to add on before we sign off? I, I think that's good. Okay. Uh, Merry Christmas. And hey, that's right. Happy engagement. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you very much. I just got engaged, so I'm pretty excited about it. But uh, he's been offering me advice on uh, on wedding planning. So uh, pretty much it was just say yes, ma'am. So. That's, that, that's the at the end of the day, if you're married, <laughs> then you had a good wedding. That's the rest exactly of it right. is not your deal. That's right. That's right. All right. I really do appreciate you coming on. And uh, uh, if you don't have anything more to add, I guess we'll kind of sign off. And uh, thank you guys so much for, for joining us. And uh, I hope you've been able to learn about everything that Senator uh, McCourtney has going on. Uh, it's definitely a lot. And uh, you can definitely keep in touch with, with uh, him. And if you have any medical marijuana questions, are they free to reach out to your office? Absolutely. I reach out to my office or if I could remember that, uh, that email, email address right. and, and maybe you can have that when you put I'll this put it up. On, and, yeah, absolutely. Um, then you can reach out to me to direct, directly or you can just send it to that email address and you would actually then be reaching out to the entire committee at Perfect. one time. Perfect. Well, guys, thank you again so much for joining us. And uh, that's pretty much all we got for today, but we covered a lot of ground. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. 